All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are very quickly going to be jumping into game number two of Bang Bang versus Momentum Gaming. And uh, on that note, Sham2, please just tell us a little bit about these teams because the draft has to go by very quickly. All right, well, we already have game number one has already been finished. It's Bang Bang is going to take that first game, but this is going to be game number two. So this is going to be the best of three. We're going to Dragonshire. And I'm curious to see what the draft looked like, but it's already finished up. So we kind of just jumped into the series just so we can bring you, the viewers, more games. Forkor, what happened in that draft? No man. Uh, so Uther first pick uh, into Jaina Leoric. And then from there, we have uh, Johanna Kael'thas. And as I wait for the uh, technology to kind of uh, follow up. So ja uh, Johanna Kael'thas. No Zagara, because the Zagara was the first ban. We have a Zero Tool there as well. But the Uther Johanna Kael'thas is now up against the jo uh, the Jaina Leoric. And from there, the ban went into a Sonya. A Sonya ban is a really interesting one. I guess they were a little bit afraid there of any type of really aggressive Sonya play, especially oh, because... I lied. No, I didn't. Never mind. Okay. Uh, and then I guess the rest of the... The Jaina, of course, is just one of the strongest pickups that you can have especially with Johanna. I so I'm curious to see what the rest of the draft me. looks like because I'm starting to see these compositions and I'm like, something happened here. Ready for <laughs> uh, so to finish things off, Kerrigan and Anubarak will uh, finish the team for me. momentum. And uh, Bang Bang will end for up with a Tyrande, Murden, Karazim. The Kerrigan, I think, is the one that I really wanted to point out here. Ooh. Love the Kerrigan pickup, especially with Anubarak and the Uther. That's going to be a really strong roaming composition. Very curious to see how this is going to play out. And then, of course, with the Tyronda on the opposite end of the spectrum. A very interesting setup because it's got the Muradin to back it up with. Oof. All right, so had to speed through that. So sorry, guys. <laughs> um, but by the end of it, I mean, yeah, The so the, we just saw Dragonshire with the Kerrigan ban. Uh, she's a very strong hero when it comes to engaging on this smaller battleground. And now Kerrigan, Anubarak, Johanna uh, as kind of a big gank squad from Momentum. But Bang Bang, we know a little bit with their own. They got the Tyrande Murd, and that's a little bit more old school. They could even throw the Jaina into that. Tyrande Jaina uh, with the stun into the triple kind of burst. It actually be very powerful here from Bang Bang as well. Their front line feels a little weaker just because the Kerrigan is going to be a big factor for momentum, but Bang Bang have the, the seven-sided strike ready to go. That's what I'm really curious about, is just because both teams have a really good roaming composition. Which one's really going to kind of take the cake here? Bird and Tyrande versus just Kerrigan plus anything, really? I mean, that's all you have to say. But during the team fights, what I'm really scared about is just that Uther and Kerrigan put together. That's just terrifying. But we right. got into the game here. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning over here on the left-hand side, it is Bang Bang in the blue trunks. B-Kid, Goku, Prismaticism, Tiger JK, and June. Now, Tiger JK, of course, is the founder of the SEL League as well. And B-Kid, as you can tell, uh, and I think Prismaticism as well, X, uh, Pool, Plato, some Tangos. And they went all the way into the finals of some of our Road to BlizzCon NA qualifiers. So on the flip side, though, these guys... Uh, <laughs> actually destroyed me last night in Team League. Insider, Heian, Kargi, Shuffler, and Risenbane make up Team Momentum. And my god, like once they get that momentum going, it's really hard to keep them down. You forgot the favorite name of the favorite player of mine on their team, Corgi. No, I, didn't I say Corgi? I think you did. My bad, he's a cute I would have made a giant puppy noise. He's a cute one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so anyway, Goku is going to be the one in the middle of the map, and it looks like they're looking to draw out the rest of the team so they can go immediately onto the Kael'thas and pick up that takedown. Big stuns, man. The Muradin, Jaina by themselves, uh, but you throw that Tyrande in that as well, and, I mean, you're just not going to be moving this early on. How many Orb Towns do we got? Looks like only three. Yeah, only three this round, but again, you know, going back and forth, a lot of uh, ping pong, as I like to call it, uh, is going to be happening. Jun's going to be holding them bottom, I think, and the others will be roaming around. Take a look at that level one talent coming out there from a new Rack. Going to go for the extended spikes, maxes out the impale range by 25%. A very interesting pickup here, just because they want to go for a lot more of that crowd control. And they also want to make sure that that new Rack is going to be a little bit safer. Uh, I've been actually seeing the extended spikes into Bed of Barbs, level yes. seven. Uh, so it's actually like a really old build. It is a little bit more of an older build, but with the automatic generation of uh, the Locust, not the Locust, the Beetles at level four into the Bed of Barbs, you 
are kind of getting the best of both worlds. It's not a pure beetle build, but it's still very engage heavy, which is kind of what the team wants. Ooh, a little bit of an engagement here onto Goku as he's going to try and get away here. Does he have a Wraith Walk available? It doesn't look like he does. He is using the Drain Hope on Heyoon to keep alive for long enough. But we see Kael'thas falling in the bottom lane as well. B-Kid, Tiger JK, and June keeping a very hard presence down there. Yeah, again, like the double stun combo just is absolutely a terror. Deadly blows could actually, you know, substitute for uh, the Jaina burst just a little bit. It's not going to be the same degree of damage, but if you can't move, it doesn't really matter. And wow, we're actually getting very aggressive from uh, Bang Bang down here. Now, it is important to note, Bang Bang did take game number one. So this is uh, you know, a potential match point for them. And they're already at level four. They got those talent tier and they're really going for this. Yeah, June is just staying in the middle of those Deech Giants, trying to tank them and try and get them as much as possible. We are seeing Heyoon get immediately eliminated there by beautiful Blizzard coming in there from Prismaticism, as well as a Hunter's Mark. Tiger JK gonna be able to push away Shuffler, and this whole entire operation is a success. Yep, and Goku, I mean, he's really bullying around Insider up to the top. The, the got the steel on top of those giants. Level five coming into that. Uh, something I noticed just before the fight, Tiger JK took searing arrows. I don't know if that was a snap decision to help out that fight or if that was planned, but I mean, hey, they got the kill and they were able to take down the giants as a result as well. And again, like a little bit of extra damage now to go with this uh, bit of a roaming ping pong comp between these guys. And with this composition, they're now going to be able to have the bottom shrine going on over there. We're going to have that little bit of musical shrines going on yet again. But as soon as the Pong happens, the ping happens yet again. Hey, you now going to get engaged on yet again. A huge amount of damage with the Hunter's Mark, the Lunar Flare, and just about everything else is going to be able to take out Hey, you yet again, giving them the map advantage to do whatever they please. All right, Insider does go for the Legion of Beetles, but uh, he is not faring well up against Goku up there. Now, Prismaticism is uh, trying to get this dragon. We do got the intercept from Jin, but it's not enough for the shield glare. But still, Korg is a one-trick pony in that regard. Now, Prismaticism is going to be bringing forth a three-minute dragon. And they also Where does Kale lose? keep dying? Kael'thas <laughs> is just dying all the time. He was coming in from the jungle from the mid to into the bot lane, which is a little bit odd. And got caught, I guess. And so that's going to be another loss of Kael'thas, and that's going to be his third death. I haven't caught a single Kael'thas death except the first. He's kind I of just, with him. I just have no idea where he is, and he keeps dying, and it's really weird. <laughs> it's, uh, Kael'thas was actually poorly constructed. He's actually a giant piece of paper soaked in gasoline, and it didn't really work out so well when they made him a fire mage. <laughs> well, yeah, so far, three deaths in, it's already given rise to over a level advantage. Prismaticism basically goes uncontested mid, and uh, bottom, unfortunately, not going much better here for momentum. They've now lost four towers, about to be a fifth, as Goku is 2v1-ing at top against Shuffler and Insider. Yeah, Insider's having a really difficult time just because of the effectiveness of that drain hope from Goku. We can really see just what that's lending themselves to having just this massive advantage in the top lane, but not only the top lane, because he's drawing out two members, you can see just how much he's able to, they're, they are able to do on the rest of the map. All right, what is Goku actually rolling? Reanimation, Fealty unto death, and Ghastly Reach. The Fealty is really the big key to his uh, survivability into that one. Yes, there's, I'm not taking away from uh, you know, the spooky hand. But at the same time, that field is 1% uh, max health and 5 mana, even while undying. So even if he did go down, he is going to be coming back if he gets a lot of this soak from these uh, creeps very, very quickly. So If he ever goes down is the question. Yeah. He's still at zero deaths as yeah. a Leoric. And he just has infinite mana at this point because he's not getting contested. Insider, every time he gets hit by that spooky hand, is not really able to do any kind of big defense. Okay, Now he actually is in danger of going down because Heun and crew are coming up. But still, Goku with that uh, that laning Leoric is just doing phenomenal. Uh, you say he's able to go down, but oh, the blades do not actually hit and he uses the Black March to flee. Goku is able to stay alive for... There's a huge primal grasp. Is it going to be enough? Up. It's so incredibly close. Oh my god, they finally take him down with three members, but look what's happening yeah. in the bottom lane. Yeah, this was... I mean, that was all planned. Goku just needed to keep them there as much as they want. Oh my gosh. So bottom forts 
for uh, you know, uh, Leoric, and Leoric at this point, again, anything that dies around him, he's just going to come back that much quicker, and he's just going <laughs> to immediately just go right back to it. Uh, we also got Jun pushing into the mid as well. Now that has been a very successful push. A level 11 to 9. We saw that March of the Black King keep him alive for just so much longer up into the top. But seven-sided strike, Starfall, summon Water Elemental, and Avatar to join the ranks of uh, that March of the Black King. I'm still loving the fact that they changed Water Elemental enough so that it, we see both Ring of Frost and Water Elemental come out pretty much just about the same amount. Yep. I think we see Water Elemental just a little bit more often still, probably because people are just so incredibly familiar with it because Ring of Frost never existed. But and I'm glad to see it still coming in. But speaking of that, we actually have a pretty good fight going on here yet again for Goku in the top lane. All right, Goku, your time is uh, time is nigh. But still, it takes one, two, three, four, five heroes to do that. Again, all five are showing top. Bang Bang's pushing bottom with, again, the help of these mercenaries. <laughs> and with this huge pressure, they're able to just possibly take this keep very early. We're actually seeing that momentum is not even backing you. They're only sending Johanna back. They've only got Heyoon over here. Heyoon goes down. Is this going to be a really early keep? I'd, I'd really like it if heroes would stop kind of suiciding because it's making me look bad as an observer. <laughs> Seven deaths currently now on the oh my side God, the of double, momentum. Double siege, bros. That's a keep at seven minutes, champ. Yeah, that's a pretty rough thing to come back from, and they're able to get a lot of map pressure out of this. They're now moving on into the mid lane, and I don't know what they can really do. Goku is, is still warding them away in the top lane. Yep. Level 11 Five. to 13. This fort is now about to drop into the mid. We are about to get a dragon here as well, and I gotta say, I mean, Leoric has been the subject of much scrutiny through this community, but my god, Goku's making the look phenomenal. It's a lot of just Goku's phenomenal play as well as just the strength of Leoric. Both of them put together is incredibly terrifying, and he's definitely gone Kaioken times 10 in this fight. <laughs> there's no, <laughs> there's definitely no arguments about that in terms of how many people he's able to take on. All right, Karakin combo will not land. They are going to go for Jin. Seven star to strike to avoid a lot of this, but Chris Madison has that icy veins, and he's popping a lot of damage into this combination. We do got the double spell shield. We have a shrink ray in that as well, and Johanna will be the first to drop. Heyun can't even grab the undefended J Jaina, and there's the second looking for the third. Shuffler's going to drop. Insider very likely to be dropping here as well. And during all this, this was a 4v5, Kev. Top lane has got that Tiger JK pushing real hard yeah this dragon is absolutely demolishing this top wall and it's going to be able to go straight on into possibly the second or maybe even third keep by that time because we can see that they are already pushing on through this middle wall actually tiger jk gonna back up just because the dragon is completely out of its timer but still level 16 so incredibly close there two talenteers above and here's a massive lunar flare to start off a really good fight oh my god that seven sided strike and the star fall as well insiders just running for the hills goku's not gonna let him but oh that's gonna be a stun i think that actually might be enough for the beetle lord to get out b kid now gonna be low but nope he jumps it corgi because no real uh no real stick to go fetch right now so 16 to 12 kev 16 to 12. It's not looking too easy, and it's going to lend them to having, yet again, a ridiculous amount of map control like we saw uh, in two arcs games. Then they're using that map control to kind of run around the ca uh, run around the map, pick up all these mercenary camps, and that's going to just make more and more of a problem here for their opponents to deal with. And at this point, momentum, they just have to sit in their base. They don't really have any momentum on the map, so they just have to sit in their base, defend all these mercenary camps. Northern Exposure paired up with Icy Veins, the Frostbite, Snowstorm. I mean, Prismaticism is basically going uncontested in a lot of these team fights, and uh, I haven't really seen huge Kerrigan combos. Not really big uh, game changers right there. Bang, bang, is not quite going to get that steal or at least contest, but... Uh, yeah, it looks like they are going to back off onto that one. We should have Shrines coming up now as well, so there's no real point in a fight. Uh, but we did just hit 13. That's the good news going here for uh, Momentum. The yeah, the 13 talents are coming in, so they are able to pick up Eviscerate. That really kind of works well with Siphoning Impact from level 1 mm -hmm. on that Kerrigan. But they get the double spell shield because they're just so incredibly afraid of Prismaticism's just raw damage. And we also see the Shrink Ray coming in here as well, just possibly to give them a little bit of breath from whenever we see the Muradin or the Leoric jump into the back line. 
I would say Leoric more than uh, more than the Mirrodin, but I mean, if they can, they really want to make sure that they can get on Jaina, uh, especially when that Icy Veins gets popped out. And we're seeing that these shrines pop back up here. We are seeing that momentum is going to grab this top shrine, but we're seeing a massive collapse here coming in yep. here from Bang Bang yet again. We see a huge skeletal swing to start this all off. Insider taking a good amount of damage. In fact, Corky going to get caught in the seven sided strike the black. Uh, March of the Black King is going to be able to take out a lot of the health uh, remaining on Insider, and that's going to go down. Shootler now going to be the next target to fall. Gayoon popping the, the Mega Storm, but it's just not going to be enough. Oh. We see a massive Radiant Dash paired with a Lunar Flare to finish off the last member there of Momentum, and there's just nothing left. They have to run down to the bottom, pick up that shrine, and turn it into a dragon. That that last stun from Tiger JK, one of the foremost Tyrande players, uh, by the way, uh, at least in my eyes, uh, was just absolutely cool. sick right there. So not quite game yet, but bottom lane has Catapults pushing in with Stone Bros. Mid is getting pushed in. We're about to have Tiger once more piloting that Dragon Knight. Uh, this, this mid keep, is it stays their numbers, Kev. This is going to be a really difficult thing for them to fight off just because it's still 14 to 18. That's four levels, not only in just stats, but also in talent tiers as well. And they've got those spell shields now coming back on up here, but that's not going to be enough because the dragon itself is a massive amount of auto attack damage. And keeping this pressure alive, they're just able to pick this up without any really big skirmish or anything coming coming in here. Yeah, B-Kid is going to take some hits, but I mean, Jun's right there with that Breath of Heaven as well. It's going to keep him uh, going fairly fairly well. Tiger JK is opting to go for the keep instead of the core, and it's just a bit more of a safer play. Goku's taking a heck of a lot of uh, hits right there, and Tiger still has 30 seconds that dragon. I don't think this keep's going to live. I don't think so either. Massive March of the Black King is going to be able to do a good amount of damage with a seven-sided strike paired up with it. Goku is going to be able to rotate back on out there. Shuffler is going to fall yet again, and the Dragon Knight still exists. 16 seconds left on it. They go straight yep. to the core two. Three members down here. Oh, Goku is just living so much with so many creeps going down around him. 1% increments is just doing its work, but it doesn't really matter by the end of it. 18% and counting. Tiger's still in that dragon, but that is going to be the 2-0 for Bang Bang as they now move on to face up against Tuark here in the Go for Heroes uh, September monthly finals. Really, really good play coming in there, and that was really impressive just to see just how much that Leoric was able to kind of just ward everybody away. It wasn't even a question for a good amount of time of whether or not Leoric was going to be able to draw one, two, five members of the enemy team to go on yeah. up to the top lane, and that just allowed them to have that bottom lane for free. There's a lot of advantages uh, to kind of, uh, you know, having, be, as a Leoric, there's a lot of advantages to drawing that many people up to your lane because how many times did we see they tried to just destroy him? And, you know, to be fair, they, they did destroy him. Uh, but, you know, he has fealty unto death. So anytime that anything dies around him uh, for those, uh, those creeps, he comes back that, just that much faster. He doesn't have to go from a fountain. He's still able to collect orbs. And then he just reincarnates on top of the point and he takes it back 10 seconds later. Uh, and because of so much pressure, Tom, bottom lane was the big focus. We saw multiple mercenary camps. We saw multiple forts and keep pressures early on. We had a seven minute keep because there's just too many people doing with the Leoric. That was really a big fall, uh, flaw right there from Momentum Gaming. They just weren't able to deal with Goku. And what's really crazy is I'm looking at the stat screen right now. Goku just had all the stats. He had top siege damage, 109,000. Top hero damage, 32,000. Those entire Black games, Kings. except for Risen Bane. Risen Bane is the only one who actually surpassed him. But on his own team, 32,000. He had most amount of rolled, which is most damage soaked. And then he also had the most amount of experience, too. So he just, he just won. He won the game. But the team itself, of course, used all of his victories to really get the whole victory of the match of the series. And they're going to move on now to two work. So I'm a little sad that we didn't get to do the draft uh, live, and I do apologize for the rush nature of that, ladies and gentlemen. But, I mean, this is going to be a rather interesting game. Bang Bang going up against uh, Tuark into the semifinals, both clinching wins on Dragonshire. And Leorics are really kind of uh, big linchpins, I, I feel, when it comes to these drafts. If we don't have Leoric bans, I think he's still going to be among those first pick potentials. Oh, most certainly. And I'm actually kind of curious to see if Tuark was just watching these games and be like, okay, so... You very uh, likely team, were. <laughs> team, we should probably... Oh, I don't know. We have ban, ban Tuark? Yeah, it's up there. Ban, ban Leoric? Depends yeah. on who gets first pick. 
Yeah, of course. Well, yep. you can still ban Leoric. I mean, if you're not as comfortable as Goku is on Leoric, you just want to get rid of it and go from there. We'll see. Either way, we're going to take a quick break here, ladies and gentlemen.